Welcome to Stoughton Spotlight. I'm your host, Jeffrey Pickett. On this episode, we're going to bring you another update on the Stoughton High Building Project. And as we speak today, we are about a month and a half away from groundbreaking on this project. We've been bringing you updates over the course of the last few years and uh, groundbreaking is in sight. And uh, to talk about the latest with this project, I have TJ Recupero on the episode, uh, who's the chairman of the High School Building Committee, and Dom Tiberi, who is from Compass Project Management, which uh, they are the owner's project rep for this project. So TJ, Dom, th morning. thank you so much for joining me. Good to be here. And uh, let's get right into it with, uh, uh, we could start off with a timeline, uh, Dom, and, and going into uh, where this project is right now as we're filming at the start of May. So uh, let me just bring up the, the slide presentation, and here we go. Well, to begin with, I just wanted to kind of recap. The last time we all met uh, in a community forum was back in uh, November of uh, last year. Um, from that point, we, uh, we started to do actual construction documents, and we went from 60% to just currently 90%, and we're ready to go out with 100% construction documents by the end of May for uh, bids to our subcontractors in coordination with Compass, uh, DRA, our architect, and Consigli Construction. Our, um, our goal is to issue them out by May 24th and to have our bids come in by the end of June, around June 27th. Uh, but at that time, we take those numbers and we start to develop the construction budget going forward, which was what we call the, a guaranteed maximum pricing. Uh, process. Um, currently, we are out to uh, early site package. Early site package includes uh, structural steel, the actual site utilities that come into the into the uh, project, and um, um, concrete. Uh, we've started to get those numbers in now. This way, we can, as we mobilize, and our mobilization date right now is June 9th. Uh, once we mobilize, we'll start to bring the utilities in from the street during the summer. Um, so not to affect the school and uh, complete those utilities and then start the work on the foundation. Sometime uh, uh, in the fall, we'll start to erect steel and we can talk about that as we go along. Sure. So, so um, uh, we can go back to, uh, back to the studio and uh, uh, you started mentioning some of these benchmarks and of course the ribbon cutting June 15th, that's a Thursday, from, uh, it starts at 10 a.m. and it'll be on site and you mentioned June 9th when the trucks will be coming in. Uh, it's a day after graduation, so wasting no time getting going. No, no we're, we're, we're mobilizing June 9th. The mobilization will be that, uh, you know, we'll fence in the construction area, put up the safety barriers where we need to. We'll be bringing in the trailers, uh, working with the site contractor who will start bringing in some heavy trucks um, to do some of the uh, earth moving that we have to do. Also working with the utility companies in coordination with them to bring those utilities off of Pearl Street onto the uh, future high school project. And so when you see uh, a project of this scale, uh, obviously it's going to take a, a couple of years. What can residents expect to see this summer with the project? Basically, you know, June, July, August. June, July, August, it's, um, it's, it's not very, uh, uh, exciting in some ways. We're, we'll be doing ground clearing. We'll be doing some uh, um, channeling for the utility piping that's coming in. And I think um, we actually have a, not to interrupt, but I think we have a slide that uh, shows this up on screen. The, but just to continue, um, yeah. they'll, they'll be working with the utility companies, as I said, coordinating going through um, the parking lot by the superintendents and us. Uh, a parking light area next to the tennis courts and also so along right here yeah along Adams Street there um, th that way we can get this all done but during the summer and then we'll repave that area so getting ready for uh, September when the students come back once we get the utilities in we'll you know obviously we'll lay it out so that the utilities are coming into the area that they'll be projecting out through the foundation we'll be laying out the foundation getting the um, form work done that will pour the concrete and that will be getting ready to receive the steel that will be coming in in the fall. The reason we do the early site package is that it takes time to fabricate the materials such as structural steel. So we're getting a head start on that. Uh, 
because our you know our ultimate goal is by the fall of 2019 is to get the students in place. Sure, and uh, coming back to the studio, um, one of the topics I heard brought up or questions at the latest public forum that the high school building um, committee held was uh, the timing of the construction you know during the day when when can residents in the area or even residents just driving through um, expect to see construction mm -hmm. crews on site the um, the actual construction will be during Monday through Friday the activities are allowed from seven o'clock to five o'clock on Saturday seven to four We'll open our gates between 6 and 6.30. Uh, we're conscious of the neighbors. We're not going to have, uh, you know, uh, backup beeps coming from trucks. Uh, we're not going to be running our diesel vehicles. Uh, you know, we'll, we, we try to mitigate all of that between those hours. Uh, obviously, we'll have, uh, we have Consigli and Compass on site, so if there are any issues, we'll try to take care of them right then and there, but if there's a phone call from of uh, the uh, neighborhood, we will address it as soon as possible. So, and uh, is this there is no Sunday work. Sure. Yes. And is this something that uh, residents can expect to have road closures during any parts of the, in, for this particular summer coming up? Uh, we may have we may have details out there uh, to go around areas, but we won't close absolutely close the roads. Uh, I know you had asphalt work done where you close roads. We'll we'll keep it contained in areas so that uh, roads will not be you won't have detour redirections. Uh, so um, back to the slide, uh, we, you talked about the initial work this summer, but going ahead a little bit, um, this is what the project, to explain here where you start to see the A, B, C, and D, the green, uh, bluish, and red colors on the, well, the screen right here. So once this is August to October 2017. Right, so uh, once the foundation is in, the concrete foundation, we'll be receiving structural steel members coming in. The, um, our, our goal is from uh, really from October to midway through the winter months that we will have structural steel in place. Uh, at the same time, we'll be gearing up to do the building envelope, uh, the masonry, the window fenestration, and that will be tied into the weather so much as that we're trying to make sure. But we, because of the schedule being as tight as, as it is, Consigli Construction will do winterization so that we can do some work uh, during that time period that needs to be at 40 degrees temperature, such as masonry. So uh, it won't stop us from closing that building in. Once the building is closed in and the roof is in place, all the interior work will continue going forward. Uh, that, that's the rough electrical, rough plumbing. The studs will go up. And then as that all progresses, we'll start to do the finishes and we'll start to close the walls in. So that would and be what April this slide April 2018. It, that's about right. Yeah. April 20 to July uh, uh, 2019. 2019. Um, July July 2019. By that time period, I would say we will be very very close to complete 100 percent within the building. I would think by May of 2019 the building will be ready, mm -hmm. and uh, once school lets out, uh, we will start to be bringing in the furniture uh, equipment. Uh, brand new, but also some equipment and furnishings that the school, the existing school has that they would like to bring over at the same time. Uh, that will give us to the end of August, and then by that time, also the teachers will be able to box their material that they want to bring to their classrooms. We'll have that all brought over with a, with a uh, shipping company. And then by the time that uh, that's completed, we will, um, we will be ready for the, uh, the students to come in and the teachers to come in. Uh, of uh, September of 2019. So that's the start of the 2019-2020 school year and then once the building is occupied the next step which this slide mm -hmm. the next slide shows is having to take the existing building down. That's correct. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, it, visually it'll look like it's, it, it's slow because what we'll have to do is we'll go inside the building and if there's any other salvage materials that the town would like we'll make sure that that's taken care of. We're going to try to take care of that during the summer prior but there might be a couple of items that we'll need some uh, knocking down of some walls to get to. Uh, also, at the same time, we'll completely abate for hazardous materials the building. So once the building is considered clean, we'll start to tear the building down. Now, we don't do it with a wrecking ball anymore. We, we kind of crunch it. Uh, so little by little, the building will start to come down. We'll clear that building, and then, then the materials for the uh, new fields will come into place. 
Uh, we'll be working on the soccer fields and the football fields. The football field will be an artificial turf field. The soccer field will be a natural grass field. In the soccer field, if you could see the mouse circling on the screen, the soccer field is at the top above the school. Football field is to the right of that's, the school. That's correct. And that's, and, that's and reflected final, on that The slide. final thing is, uh, for the time period, because of that time period, we're going to be kind of in everybody's way. Uh, we'll have a very dedicated route for uh, the buses and the drop-offs. Uh, once we can clear that road between the soccer field and the football field and we can access the front of the building, we'll, we'll make that, uh, that's a priority. Uh, and also we are keeping the, the, the parking lot that is adjacent to the tennis courts available for that time period. Once that, uh, the fields are done and we have the parking in place, We'll then take the tennis courts out and complete, uh, uh, not the tennis courts, I'm sorry, the new tennis courts will be put in place where the parking lot is right now at the superintendent's area of the building. So, so you're looking at uh, moving in students for 2019-2020 school year and the whole project to be completed with fields included by the following school year, which would be 2020, 2021. We should be done by the... Uh, uh, by June of 2020, but by the time everything is reviewed and punched and warranties are issued and, you know, where everybody signs off and we're submitting all the material to the MSBA, will be done by the uh, end of the summer of 2020. And you mentioned parking. I, that was another popular topic at the latest public forum. Uh, during the immediate start of the project, uh, for next school year, for example, what's the parking situation going to be like at Stoughton High School? Well, within, with obviously, there's going to be loss of spots. Uh, that that uh, is, 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 is a practicality of the project itself. The, um, from what the discussion is, we'll, uh, the, the, the uh, tradespeople will have parking within the space. They will not be parking in the neighborhood. Uh, there will be, most, most trades will have an area where they pick up their tradesmen and bring them in. Um, you know, whether it's, um, you know, um, a van or something to that effect. Uh, outside of the area, they are going to lose parking for students. Uh, the conversation is now that uh, for the next couple to three years that the, uh, the seniors will have priority for the spaces that they have. There are, there are spaces um, that are empty as I speak because I was walking the site this morning uh, in the middle school area, so everybody wants to park close to the high school. But it, and we're talking uh, this lot then on the site. In that lot there, right. there, was, there are spaces there. So, uh, we'll see how that goes, but that uh, the seniors will be assigned, obviously, uh, first, uh, the, uh, and the faculty will have their reserve parking, and if there's anything left over. But uh, for the next couple of years, it probably will be just seniors getting parking uh, going forward. So as we have the site plan up, um, let's, uh, let's just go through that real quickly, and then we'll get into the uh, Pearl Street Park, which, uh, TJ, I know you really wanted to talk about. So, um, so site plan-wise... Um, uh, Dom, if you could walk us through. Well, just as a review, um, and a lot of people have seen this already, um, where the football field is located on Pearl Street there, um, that is where the existing high school is right now. Uh, where your arrow is right now is the future high school. We're a, buff a buffer is about 30 feet between the two schools, uh, so we can maintain uh, emergency uh, access for the fire department, the police department, and also the, uh, for the school itself. Um, in case of uh, fire alarms, uh, there'll be areas for them uh, uh, for refuge as far as getting out of the school. Um, as we talked about the phasing, we will encompass that area that right now includes the soccer field and the football field, and that'll be the area of construction and that's where we'll be uh, erecting the new building. Once, once, as we talked about, once those new, the new building is in place, we'll start to demolish the existing old high school and phase our way in. Um, if you look at uh, the future, um, you still have access on Pearl Street uh, coming in off that road and that driveway that exists, but you can see it, it curves down now towards the front of the new building. And there is a road behind the building, which is where the buses will come through and drop off. And those buses will continue on to the middle school after their drop-offs. And so let's just uh, show some renderings uh, as we continue to, to talk. Um, uh, TJ, uh, in terms of 
what's, what role does the building committee have right now as we continue to look at some slides? Well, over the course of the last several months, we've been looking at design choices primarily, trying to hone down as, as Compass and, and DRA, the architect, is, and, and Consigli Construction are going through and finalizing construction plans. The building committee's primary goal was to maintain our, our budget, um, what we had always identified and, in fact, was authorized by town meeting as what we would pay for the school. We wanted to make sure all of our design choices and, and as we hone down on the on the actual building as it will be in 2019 and beyond, uh, that we were within that at every step of the way. So Dom, I know, keeps a running spreadsheet. And, and, and in fact, I think Dom MSBA keeps track of that as well. That's correct. Going yeah. forward. So, uh, so our, our goal has been mostly as they finalize construction plans, just making sure that we maintain that commitment to the voters in town meeting that we're on budget and on time. Uh, and let's just come off uh, slides for a second. So TJ, um, as you talk about budget, uh, when can residents expect to be, uh, start to see this on their tax bill? Because obviously this project needed to be funded outside of Prop 2 and a half and there was a debt exclusion vote last June. So when will voters see the increased tax bill? Right, so um, the, I spoke with the town manager about this and uh, the, the intention is to do our first tranche of borrowing in uh, September, the fall, this coming fall. That would put our, uh, our first payments and the reflection in everybody's tax bill in fiscal year 2019, so you're talking about a year from now, um, in June, or strike that, in July of, of 2019. So still a little ways off, but something everybody should prepare for, for sure. All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about the Pearl Street Park, and we have those slides up. And uh, this is, uh, explain to me where this will be in the project. Sure, um, this is one of several components that we're, uh, we're bringing to town meeting in the category of recreational amenities requested to be funded by community preservation funding. Um, we had, if you, if you look at the, the diagram that you have, so that's Pearl Street at the bottom, and the green area is a proposed pocket park or linear park between the back of the bleachers, so the, you don't see the football field, but that rectangular area that's sort of parallel to Pearl Street. Right here. That's the football field, and the bleachers are in the center of that, and the back of the bleachers were uh, standing proud of Pearl Street about eight feet, if I remember that's correctly, Don. Right. So, um, and MSBA is in the business of education funding. So while we do get money for, for site work and, uh, and that gets reimbursed from MSBA, it, it isn't enough to cover all of our site work and athletic fields and, and landscaping and whatnot. Um, so we, we are faced with a, a, a swath of land along Pearl Street behind the bleachers that was pretty sparse. It was a grassed area. We had some money for some trees. And um, looking at that area in comparison to the rest of the site, which was pretty well, uh, well packed and well designed and, and attractive, I think, uh, school building and grounds, we didn't think we were doing that area justice nor the, the neighborhood generally. Um, so one of the ideas that came out of that is we could actually, instead of trying to, to to conceal that back of the bleachers area, what we thought we would do was actually feature it. Mm. Uh, and we could do that at no extra cost to the taxpayers. So community preservation funds are actually taxed as a surcharge on everybody's tax bill. Uh, you pay it anyway, and the community preservation committee accumulates that money. And then they fund uh, open space recreation, historical preservation, and housing is also within their mandate. So we presented to them that park area, small linear park, as well as several other amenities, uh, lights for the soccer field and track, uh, some bleachers around the soccer field, a scoreboard for the soccer field, a pavilion area around the football field, some benches and tables and picnic tables and so forth. And the concept was to make the school and the grounds more usable to the community at large beyond the school day and in fact in the summer hours. And the park particularly... It's a real nice picture of it. Yeah, I, and actually I'm very proud of that because that was, it, the other point that I want to bring up is these, 
These goals were actually specifically stated in the town's recent master plan, as well as the town's open space and recreation plan. Uh, pocket parks particularly, the master plan calls for the creation of pocket parks like this for any major uh, reconstruction or redevelopment project or development project generally. And, you know, it's a buffer for the neighborhood, but it also is a way to feature that, that area as a community amenity. There are little seating nodes. You can see a little bench area. And, um, it's densely vegetated, and uh, it should be a very attractive amenity to that area. Uh, one thing I'd like to ask just in terms of funding is, uh, again, this is going before town meeting. Uh, do you expect any questions or pushback about funding something like this outside of the project's total cost? Sure. We, when we went in front of the Finance Committee, um, one of the questions we had, and it's a fair question, is mm -hmm. you came to us and you requested $73 million of town funds to build a building, and why do you need more? And the answer is we're building the finest high school in all of the year. In 2019, we will have the best high school in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, without anything extra. Uh, asking for additional money was one way to say, if we're going to put this investment into this building in this community, this, the town's single biggest investment and in public building, it makes sense to make it more usable for people after hours. Um, things like lights, for example. How many people have been to the track after hours and seen people who walk around in the dark in the track? Um, and, these are ways that we can actually increase youth sports. Uh, we can, with the pocket park, we can actually uh, create a nice little area for people of the neighborhood because we're, we're actually bringing a pretty substantial development project and, to their neighborhood. And here's a nice, uh, another nice rendering right, of it. Right, right. And I, I think we owe it to them to actually do it as, uh, to make our project fit within their neighborhood as nice and attractively as we can, um, if that answered your question. Sure. So. Uh, and this, of course, so this has to be, this is two articles at the upcoming town meeting that will pass to fund this. Yeah, I, th I think it'll be the, we're, we'll ask that they be, uh, they'll be combined into one request, one motion. The re reason being is they're all in the same category as recreational under the CPA, the Community Preservation Act uh, uh, mandate of the several areas that they can fund. So I think we're going to ask that they be combined into one single vote. But yeah, they are broken down right now into two articles. So with our last, uh, last few minutes, um, Dom, I'd like to just run through a couple more uh, slides and have you show us. So let me just get them up right now as we speak. Uh, just a couple more uh, renderings which have become available and then we can show you some inside uh, interior renderings as well. So, um, Dom, if you don't mind just walking us through what we'll see on screen. Okay. Uh, what you're seeing here is uh, coming in from Pearl Street and uh, these, this is the front entrance. And you see uh, a, a bit of a curved landscaped area right there uh, where the flag is in the middle. Uh, that's a seating area and that's landscaped area. It'll break up the front of the uh, building. I'm, I'm not an architect, but I know aesthetically this will be uh, a, a nice detail. It's a, it's a detail where uh, students and faculty can congregate too um, as they enter the building. Uh, this is from the other side looking at it, uh, heading towards, uh, from Adam Street looking towards it. Uh, and this is also the front entrance area. But you can see that, that shelf there where students are sitting. Um, so it does break it up and it does give it a nice uh, uh, um, feel and, uh, of, of a, an urban campus in some ways, but you have all the landscaping in the area. So again, from, this is now from the front view. This is sort of a bird's eye looking at that, uh, the, th the three other previous slides kind of combined now. On the left hand side, you can see where the flag is. That's the gymnasium. Uh, you see uh, a, a little small roof area there with a um, a canopy, sl slanted canopy, that's your main entrance uh, coming in through uh, right beside the administration building and off to the right hand side is really where your academic wings are. And we could see that uh, in the, these, uh, this plan right the plan, here. The plan, yeah, if you look at this plan here where you see, and I'm not sure how it will come out on television, but the dark green is where your theater and drama is. Uh, the orange is 
of sports. Uh, that's the locker room area, and above that is your gymnasium. Uh, the gray is your, your, basically your concourse to the, uh, uh, as you come into the building, where you also have your, uh, your seating for your kitchen. Uh, the, the lavender is your administration area there. Uh, the uh, pink is the cafeteria area. Uh, where you see the blue, those are your science classrooms. They are clustered. A lot of your mechanical, electrical, and plumbing come through science classrooms. So they're clustered going up the, uh, the three stories. Uh, and the purple and gold are your, your classrooms, your day-to-day um, -day classrooms for the students. And let's, uh, let's come off the screen as they get the interior um, renderings available. And uh, bear with me for one moment. Here we go. So we could start uh, in the gymnasium here, just to give you an idea of what the inside of the school will look like now that you've seen the floor plan and the right. outside. Well, it's not much to say here. It's uh, obviously uh, DR. Well, how much will the gym seat? Pardon me? The, how many people? Um, 1,200, I believe, uh, in, that, in that range. Um, you can see where it says the Stoughton Black Knights. Those are uh, 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 seating that slides out to, to the courtyard. You have uh, two full basketball courts and then, you know, uh, uh, that, uh, that can be used for physical education, but then also, you know, during uh, tournaments, you have a basically a state-of-the-art uh, basketball court, uh, volleyball court, et cetera. This is your learning commons. Um, all of us in, at my age bracket used to call it a library, but it's now it's much more <laughs> multidimensional. Um, that's located on the second level. Um, th this is interesting. Uh, as, uh, as we, uh, in, in every industry, it's becoming more and more, uh, we're not all in cubicles anymore. We're in collaborative spaces. And that's how we do business, even in my business and, and many businesses. So there are pockets within the school where uh, a teacher can bring out their students and do some collaborative presentations or work together on a collaborative project. So this is a hallway. This right. is wow. A hallway. And yep. then with two more, uh, this is the auditorium. Auditorium, uh, I prefer to call it a performing <laughs> arts center. I don't think there are such things as auditoriums anymore. These are, these are uh, as, you, as uh, a friend of mine once told me, with uh, the state building these beautiful performing arts center, a lot of the colleges have had to catch up because these students are coming out of high school, going to colleges in the area and realizing that they're performing arts centers were so much better than the colleges. And then lastly, of course, it is a school. So I'll show you what a inside a school in, classroom inside a classroom that um, has m multiple things to help every particular student. Uh, if you have a student that has a hearing problem, if you have a student that has, uh, a, you know, um, you know, the uh, attention issues, there are there are capabilities within the classroom that help the teacher help these students. So well, it is a 21st century learning center. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dom and TJ. We've uh, unfortunately run out of time today. There's uh, so much to talk about uh, updating you with the project, but hopefully this half hour helped catch you up to date. I want to thank CJ Mullen and Michael Hammond behind the scenes helping out. I'm Jeffrey Pickett, and you've been watching Stoughton Spotlight. Thank you for tuning in.